everyone, it's Hayes. It's Miraculous Monday, so it's time for another screaming session. I heard you was looking for me. And in today's screaming session, as voted for by you, we will be taking a look at passion, or as I like to call today's video, a light episode roast with some Queen Natalie simping thrown in because she is a queen. So let's start. And Alia is voicing all of our concerns like, why are you in love with Cat Noir? And Marinette is like, well, why not? And we're all screaming at our screens like, oh, well, I don't know. Maybe it's because you've been rejecting him for like the past seven years of our time. I don't think it's been that long, but it certainly feels that long. But what on earth are these hands saying, Cat Noir? I swear to God, he's on as much crack as Andre is. But see what I was saying about Alia moving in? In this episode, there's a sleeping bag here. Two episodes later, elation, full on mattress. Our girl has moved in and I am so happy for her. So while Mariner is leaving for school in her pajamas, great job girl, Adrian is just waking up and is muttering Marinette's name. And I can't decide whether this is cute or creepy, but knowing this show, it's always both. But oh my god, Plague the Genius is like, what if Marinette doesn't love you? And Adrian, whose love language apparently is just blurting everything out all at once, is like, guess I just gotta ask her then. Like, firstly, the confidence to do that, outstanding. I could never, I'm too scared to even say hello to our postman and I've seen him six days a week for the past five years. But also like, <laughs> Adrian didn't know Marinette had feelings for him. I know that socially he is stupid, but I didn't think he was that far gone, bloody hell. So Adrian goes down for breakfast and I didn't notice when I watched this in French, but re-watching this episode in English... Actually, you know what? Just just listen yourself. How nice to see you so cheerful in the morning, Adrian. Bananas on your pancakes. Does anyone else think it's absolutely heckin' bizarre to hear Gabriel sound happy? Like, I just... I don't think I've ever been more creeped out than this before, to hear someone so evil be so nice i just oh it makes me feel weird and creeped out and physically sick to be honest i am sorry gabriel bay's voice actor but you can never be happy again because you sound like an absolute weirdo when you are so natalie best mum bursts into the kitchen and oh my god we get the shot of gabriel babe's calves and this man when does he have the time to work out like the only way i can explain his legs is because of the sheer amount of standing he does that's the only way I can rationalise it. Meanwhile, Adrian is about to cry while he stares at the banana. And don't worry, mate, I feel the same way when I look at bananas too. And oh my god, then Gabriel Babes offers to make Natalie pancake. My game not heart, cannot take it. I need to see that before the show kills me. Oh my god, Gabriel, make pancakes for your girl. We sadly do not get to see it because Natalie is like, sure, make me pancakes, sir. And he's like, oh, we're family, call me Gabriel. And she's like having none of it. And she's like, mm, what about Gabe? She is so attractive in this moment. That was amazing. Anyway, and then we have Adrian with his inability to read the room. Starts laughing like, yes, this is a family. An incredibly dysfunctional one. So Adrian leaves and the moment he is out, Natalie turns the kitchen into a WWE arena, grabs Gabriel's hand and wrestles him down to the kitchen counter. Like the woman is already incapacitated. She can't walk without... I don't know the proper name for whatever this contraption is, but she can't walk without it. And she's still stronger than him. Like, he doesn't even try to get out of this, or maybe he's just because... It's because he's enjoying it, so doesn't try to fight back. You never know. But oh my god, I swear to god, this is one of the best moments of the show. It doesn't beat the Guilt Trip Boiler Room scene or the Heroes Day sewer scene, but this is a close contender. Oh my god. So back in his room, Adrian is like, ooh, I'll give a ring to Marinette. And then he's like, mm, no, it's overreacting. Mate, if that's the case, you don't want to know what Marinette has been thinking about. And speaking of, will we ever get to know the name of this damn hamster? I swear to god, it's keeping me up at night. But back to the Queen now. Natalie is watching some of Emily's old videos because apparently she knew her husband was going to absolutely lose it and then she starts crying. When you cry, I cry. <laughs> I swear to God, if Marina, Adrian or Natalie get upset, I am gone. So for the benefit of my makeup that is far too expensive to cry off, could the three of you just stop? Thank you. So Adrian comes in for advice on Marinette and he's like, should I just tell her or should I write her a poem like they do in the books? And I'm like, I'm sorry, what kind of books have you been reading and could you tell me so I can avoid them at all costs? Like, I like a little bit of fluff as an ex-person, but that is, that is too much. And then Adrian asks, What about you? The first time you fell in love? 
How'd you handle it? Oh, it went terribly, mate. Absolutely awful for Natalie. Largely because her face got superimposed onto this picture. Like, I know I'm not the one to talk about the visual quality of the show because A, I don't care that much and B, I don't really know anything about animation. But every time I see this, it freaks me out. Like, I, I don't even know how to describe what's wrong with it. But essentially, it looks like her head doesn't belong on this body. So at school, Adrian arrives and walks into Marinette and I don't know how, since several seconds ago, she wasn't actually there. Like, no sign of her whatsoever, so she just appeared because Marinette has been learning to do magic, apparently. And after having a ramble about how fine Marinette thinks he is, she finally noticed that he is a sad boy. And oh my god, the way Adrian looks at her as they talk is so cute. Give him a hug! Like, how can she pretend not to like him? But to be fair, Adrian's teeth look absolutely huge in this scene, so I don't completely blame her. So then Plague zooms off to find Tiki. Sugar cube. And I am so soft for that name. Oh my god, I just I live for Kwame interaction, especially between these two, because we hardly ever get to see them talk. But I love the shade from Tiki to Marinette. She's like, yeah, don't worry. They'll never get together because Marinette just, uh, she can't speak to boys. But did these two not learn anything in Kwame Buster? Or does the art teacher not care about the two Kwamis? And he's just like, oh yeah, these two? Yeah, Max made some animatronics and it's uh, none of my business. None of my business is none of my business. So Gabriel Babes akumatizes Natalie, but really she's basically doing it herself. She's just like, yep, my name is Safari. This is my power. Give me the goat power. We stand a queen who knows what she wants. Like, he should just let her use the Butterfly Miraculous. This all would have been over within five episodes of season one. So I don't usually do outfit reviews for each Akuma villain because we'd be here forever. But oh my god, Queen Natalie giving off Tomb Raider villain vibes with the camo play suit and the glasses. Oh my god, I want her boots. Everything about this outfit I want and I need. Where can I get this? Please and thank you. Natalie unfortunately chooses her illusion to be time tagger. Great, so you all know how much I love Chris. But oh my god, Marinette is like, yes, I get to see Cat Noir. Adrianette will always be my favourite, but I can't deny how cute this is. Although Marinette is 100% right, she makes the worst decisions around people she loves because she's like, yep, Cat Noir, you're right, he's gone. Let's go to the cinema. And to prove my point, Venom hits her almost immediately after. Great job, Mary. So Cat Noir grabs Ladybug and as another beam chases them, he says, Please stop following me. Yeah, I'm not even an influencer. Yeah. How? What? I don't... Yeah, sure. Hashtag run. I agree with you, Cat Noir. Sure thing. Like, he'd usually probably be so happy <laughs> to get to hold and carry a Ladybug like this, but instead he's just talking to himself about a bottle of venom being in love with him. And, you know, I thought I was narcissistic. But then he's like, Ladybug, I'm sorry if you were here. You'd know what to do. Like, don't you dare talk about yourself like that. You are not useless. Do not call yourself a foolish kitty. Although the amount of self-restraint he has not to remove the earrings himself is immense. I could never. So they proceed to have a pretty lengthy conversation as Adrian and Mariner, and neither of them recognise the other's voice. You are meant to be in love with each other and you cannot recognise their voice? I don't, I don't even know anymore. I hate to say it, I hope I don't sound ridiculous. I don't know who this man is. I mean, he could be walking down the street, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know a thing. Sorry to this man. So they switch Miraculouses and Lady Noir is like, oh, you look good in red. It brings out your eye colour. Like, no, no, it does not. No, no, it doesn't. And what is this meow? God, this show is wonderful a lot of the time, but it does make me cringe like nothing else sometimes. And the cringe continues because Safari throws a chimney at them and Lady Noir is like, please don't hurt my partner's gorgeous face. <laughs> I can't do this so much longer. So then Lady Noir is like, I told you going to cinema was a great idea. And then <laughs> nearly gets smashed to death a second later. Marinette, swear to God, can you come to the next Akuma fight with your brain, please? This was terrible. <laughs> so back to Queen Natalie for an absolute power move to end all power moves. And is like, Monarch Daddy, do you want me to tell them the truth? Like, oh boy, I wish she had. Natalie is bringing the drama this season that we need. So then we get one of the worst lucky charms in the whole show. A bottle of perfume, which is basically used to be just like, yes, you're right, it's Natalie. And Lady Noir just has to go along with his logic. So then they deakumatize Natalie and Mr. Bug is like, Ooh, are you forgetting something? And Lady Noir says, uh, a kiss goodbye? I don't think I can watch the show in English anymore. It's too cringy in my own language. I don't feel this embarrassed watching it in French or Portuguese. 
<laughs> and even Tiki's embarrassed having to go through this. Look at that face. So right at the end, Adrian goes to check on Natalie and this scene warms my cold, dead heart. I just want an episode where Adrian and Natalie spend a nice, wholesome, cute day together. But also, can Natalie please give me some love advice too? Because I have no idea what I'm doing. So let's take a look at the fan art for this week. We only have two pieces and they are both from Nathart. So the first piece is of Chloe, Rose and Julica all with the Ladybug Miraculous and oh my god, amazing. Especially Chloe's hair, you all know I like the twist in the hair. Lady Bee, Queen Bee, oh my god. Gorgeous with the drill hair, love it. And the other two girls look amazing too. And we also have Zoe, Julica and Rose with the Cat Miraculous and they all look so adorable. Green is definitely Zoe's colour. There will be a poll up tomorrow so you can vote for the next Screaming Session and it'll have all season five episodes on there. However, there'll be no Screaming Session next week because next week we will be doing the meme review again. So the Screaming Session will be the week after. What was your favourite moment from this episode, besties? I'll see you in the next one.